There's a new Supermassive Games trailer, which means it's time for me to... What? That's right, look at it way too closely. So let's dig into everything we know about Dead by Daylight, the casting of Frank Stone. First off, obviously, there's the title, which is a pun on the term cast in stone, a frequently used variant of the popular saying set in stone or etched in stone which means that something is absolutely fixed and unchangeable. The title suggests a theme of inevitability. That try as you might to prevent something, you'll never succeed. Is the apocalyptic approach of the entity that we see teased in the trailer the something that can't be avoided? Of course, there's two more meanings to cast, which might be of relevance to the game and character of Frank Stone. The first is the term casting, which can refer to a way to craft an object from iron. Where wrought iron is iron that you heat up and then pound into the shape you want, or just turn with a wrench, like the classic look of wrought iron fences, cast iron is iron that was heated until it was liquid metal and then poured into a shape. So will the game, at least in part, tell the story of how the character of Frank Stone was shaped into the creature we see at the end of the trailer? That would kind of step on Devil and Me's toes a little, but then again, this isn't a Dark Pictures game, so is that really a danger they have to worry about? As for the third definition, we can leave that to the relevant parts of the trailer. Okay, that's all I can say about the title. Let's move on to the trailer itself. We open on the blank footage at the start of a reel of 8mm film. I went through this footage manually. The idea is that the red line has been physically drawn onto a piece of clear film with a felt tip marker. The brief text that shows up says title and date, suggesting that this is where someone will later put that information. The clear implication, this is raw footage that hasn't been edited into its final form yet. Then the film runs out and we get a burning film effect, as well as this symbol, which looks like an E followed by an X followed by maybe another E? It's kind of hard to identify that last letter. Here's the image with the letters highlighted so you can get a better look at them. We get a Behavior Interactive logo with film scratches running down it, going for a Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe here, which isn't a huge shock given that Leatherface is already in Dead by Daylight. I also frame by framed this, but found no information in the scratches. After another whiteout, we get to a man's back. Is this Frank Stone? The rules of trailer construction say yes, so for now we're just going to assume that's the case and call this man Frank until we have a reason not to. We can see his wall of tools here, but we'll defer comment on them until a better look we get a little later on. More interesting are the whispered voices we hear under the footage. There's a woman sobbing, a creepy voice that sounds like it's speaking backwards, wish I had the skills to isolate and reverse that, and most importantly, what sounds like the same man saying, it's me and don't do it. So is Frank going to kill someone close to him? Will his brother or a co-worker be his first victim? Also, let's take a moment to appreciate the detail that went into crafting this guy's shirt. Not only did the seams look great, but they put in a little dent where the label is attached on the inside. Which raises an important question. Who does Frank Stone wear? Next, Frank drags a cloth across the front of his mask. Nice detail giving him filthy knuckles, character artist. Although if he's cleaning it, he's doing a terrible job. There is blood all over that thing. There's another flash of white, followed by the supermassive logo. Leading into the white, we get the same frame over and over. I don't know if there's any meaning to it, but it does look like two massively overexposed images that we're seeing the frame split between. It kind of looks like a post or a column next to a field in front of a forest on the left side of the frame, with some kind of a building on the right. Is this the facility in which the game will be set that we're going to see later in the game? Look for smokestacks, people! Here's the image with the top and bottom in their proper places to help us spot it later. Lots of weird scratches on the Supermassive logo, but nothing meaningful yet. Now we get a wider shot of Frank. We can see that his left arm seems to be badly burnt. Horrible burning as a part of the thing that transformed him into a killer fits the casting theme nicely, especially since this seems to be a metalworks, or foundry, that he's working at. There's more screaming and another don't do it in the background. Then the music starts and we get our first line of dialogue from what is likely a playable character. Whatever is down there is too dangerous. Also, in my trailer reaction, I thought that this was a straight chisel, but it's the same triangular chisel we see in the next shot. Those are some dirty nails, bro. Then we get the Dead by Daylight logo, letting us know that this is a narrative adventure set in the continuity of those games. 
Now that the three corporate logos are out of the way, I can ask, did you notice what I did about them? That's right. The film scratches never obscure the logos in any way. For some reason, they all happened behind the text because they wanted grit and old school film authenticity, but only so long as it didn't risk brand identification. There's another film burnout, and then we get an SC or SO to go along with the EX we've already seen on this film stock. What could this mean? What's especially weird is that the EX seems to be printed normally, but the S and its accompanying letter are mirrored. I wonder why. Now it's a wide shot of Frank at his workbench. Super high waist in those pants, dude. Is this sequence taking place in the past? Like somewhere from the 40s to the 60s? We'll check for visual signifiers of date as we go forward. We get a close up on the triangular file while reversed whispering plays. Then it's back to black. This is followed by another glimpse of that split image and more text. This text is considerably less mysterious, as rotating on its side and reversing it suggests that this footage was shot on Kodak film stock. Let me just mush all of these letters together and voila! Do you think this is product placement or just like something they did for fun? At this point, the song kicks in. It's something called Daylight by David Kushner, which I found out the old fashioned way by uploading my trailer reaction and waiting for it to get copyright claimed. Which is fine, but it's not exactly cool that he blocked it in two territories. Sorry, 3% of my viewers, I guess you missed one if you don't have a VPN. In addition to this title tying in nicely to the franchise, the song is about a murderer who begs the Lord to forgive his sins, but despite the fact that he's racked with guilt, he won't stop sinning, so he flees from daylight, which represents the sight of God. So yeah, seems like a pretty good song to pick for the serial killer thing. Also, the official video is an unbroken shot of a guy, maybe the singer, probably the singer, chopping wood with an ax, thematic all over the place out there. Now the real trailer content starts. We get a single flashlight beam searching through the dense woods. Then we switch over to a POV shot swinging the flashlight around the trees. I freeze frame this, but there's no Eliza or curator hiding in there, sadly. The flashlight beam finds a badly charred hand on the ground. That's our second burn victim in the game already. The image is a little indistinct, so I can't tell if this white cloud in the background is supposed to be the smoke coming off of the still warm corpse or just mist on the ground in the forest. Then things go nuts as we move to a close-up of an 8mm projector in action. So, here's the notable information we can glean about this. The wide sprocket holes identify this as standard 8mm film, rather than Super 8, and the lack of a magnetic or optical strip running down the right-hand side of the film means that this is silent. As for the images, sadly it's so small that I can't be definite about what I'm seeing. I'm pretty sure it's a human face, but beyond that, I got nothing. And boom, here's what I'm calling the most important shot in the trailer, because it recontextualizes literally everything we're seeing as a film that these two are watching. Two white people sitting next to one another with the projector between them. She's got blonde hair and pigtails, which are used to signify youth, and she doesn't have any piercings in her ear. Are children watching a snuff film in this shot? That makes this the perfect time to circle back around to the title, the casting of Frank Stone. Is he being cast in a film sense of the word? Has he been chosen to play a role in the snuff film these kids are watching? Or is it, on a more metal level, the story of how he is cast in the role of a dead by daylight killer? Is this the story of the path that leads him to becoming one of the killers who stop the fog? And if the choice implied in this interpretation of the title is accurate, who exactly is the one casting him in this role? Are these two snuff film watching children like harbingers or avatars of the entity? We now get a look at the scratched up projector lens. The kids do not take good care of their equipment, evidently. While it's nice that the little details about the lens type have been placed here, it's too bad that the developers didn't come up with a fake camera company name to put on the left side of the lens, leaving all that blank space. Instead of the human face from the film, we get a picture of the creepy facility where the game is set. And based on this footage, it's fair to say that the overexposed frames are depictions of the same location. Next, the shot reverses and we see the projection on the wall. It's a creepy rundown facility that we're going to learn more about going forward. Tragically, we can't make any details about the room the projector is in, other than a metal bar with a crossbar over to the left. Is that part of a set of scaffolding? Is there construction going on in this room? This is footage of a drainage tunnel. 
one that's been sealed up and then broken into. So the facility shut down, possibly at the time of the accident that badly burned Frank Stone. And then later someone, possibly him, broke in to start using it for nefarious purposes? Then we switch to our main characters arriving at the same location. Notably, the outflow tunnel looks exactly the same as it does in the 8mm footage, so this is happening at approximately the same time as the footage is filmed. So whose footage is it? Here's where we get our first look at the cast, and because it's a Dead by Daylight game, there's four of them. And one killer. This doesn't mean they're going to be running around in the fog, of course, but don't be shocked if they wind up fixing a generator at some point. I mean, hell, even Rachel King did that. Wait, was the generator kick in House of Ashes a hint that they were working on a Dead by Daylight game? They hinted about it in the quarry, but does it go back even farther than that? Also, does that confirm my long-standing belief that Rachel is the game's real villain because only villains can kick generators? Anyway, as for the cast, their costumes so generically it's impossible to guess when this is supposed to be set, other than, in all likelihood, after the 1970s. And I'm basing that solely on the woman's two-color long-sleeved t-shirt. So, 70s, 80s, maybe? So, which of these characters are going to come with Frank in the spin-off Dead by Daylight pack that's going to come out at the same time as the game? It's way too early to guess, but I'm going to do it anyway and say it's these two, with the other two being legendary skins. And which of these guys said the line about something dangerous below? I'm going to guess him, since I already picked the other guy for the default survivor pack. Now, it's time to look into the tunnel. Is this a tunnel we've seen in the Dark Pictures opening credits? Probably not, but it's fun to suggest that it could be. Here's a depiction of Frank's workstation after it's been abandoned for years. It's now lit just by moonlight, and the same vines we've seen outside the tunnel are creeping all over it. So, I'm guessing Frank built his mask and went on a rampage years ago, and now the characters are investigating the place where it happened for some reason? We'll do a breakdown of the two versions of the workbench in a little bit. Now, the team is walking down the tunnel, and I've got to say their flashlights look super old, the kind of retro chrome you'd expect to see from the 50s right up into the 80s. Sadly, I can't get enough of a good look at the lead guy's watch to get a sense of when it would be from. I'm definitely leaning towards this being a period piece though, 80s at the latest. It's the teaser's money shot, the ritual is complete, and the entity is ripping open a hole in the sky. What does this have to do with a snuff film and the main characters? I have no idea, but I can't wait to find out. Here they find a big spot marked X on the wall. I'm embarrassed to say that if this is something from Dead by Daylight, I just don't know enough about the game to identify it. Then again, X's are frequently just X's. It's Dead by Daylight's iconic blood-covered hook! So yeah, we're gonna be seeing someone getting hooked in the game. Hopefully it goes better for them than it did for Matt in Until Dawn. This is the first shot we get of Frank in his villain outfit. And now here's his sketchbook where he's drawn some knife shapes, and I guess what the actual entity looks like? All we ever see are the guy's pincers, but I guess those pincers have to connect to something, and there it is. I mean, this could wind up being a Cthulhu thing where he doesn't actually look like that, and really it's just as close as humans can get to depicting an extra-dimensional presence. Between these shots, we get a few more bits of film, but they're just whiteouts with no new information. Then the rift gets wider and the entity moves in, and we finally get a close-up of Frank and get to see what a great job they've done with this design. It's a trashed and modded full head welding mask with not just the jagged mouth we've seen before, but also outward protruding jaw spikes designed to remind people of the entity's hideous spider legs. This might just be a lighting thing, but to me it looks more worn than it did in the close-up we got earlier. That and the grey hairs on his chin and the state of the workbench suggest that this Frank Stone is considerably older than the one that first built the mask. Love the rest of his costume as well, with the chains, the double shirt, and the leather welding apron. You know, I'm now worried that we're never going to get Grantham Dumet in Dead by Daylight like I want, because they've got too many leather apron guys already. I mean, between Frank and Leatherface. And kind of the Trapper? I mean, his leather waders are, are kind of borderline an apron, right? Also, given the sheer volume of blood dripping off of Frank's face and down his chest, we're going to have to at least allow for the possibility that he might be a cannibal of some kind. We have more letters on film stock. This time it's a PR that doesn't seem to be attached to the date, titles, or Kodak we've already seen. So there's a chance there's a third word to talk about. Back to the camera, this time we've got Frank in the middle of the frame, because, as I suggested earlier, there's a good chance that he's been cast as the star of a snuff film. 
a snuff film that will get the attention of the entity and open a portal for it to enter our world. Or maybe I've gone too far with this theory already because 8mm is one of my favorite films. Where was I? Right. We end on the key art of Frank with the black fogs forming spikes behind him, confirming that he's one of the entities chosen. As if everything else about the trailer so far hadn't already made that abundantly clear. Before we take a look at the key art, let's jump back and examine Frank's work table. Starting at the top, we've got a bunch of wrenches on the wall, and then a lot of canisters of oil and gasoline. Although those are just guesses, really. We can't actually know what's in those things. Then we've got a flat tool caddy and a watering can, followed by a couple of C-clamps and a bunch of rolls of duct tape underneath them. On the middle row, we've got some paper tack to the wall, then a grinder for sharpening tools. Behind the grinder is what might be a radio, but I can't tell for sure. On the wall, we've got a pick, scissors, some hedge clippers, some kind of bush knife, a set of carpentry calipers, and two extremely old wood cutting axes on the wall. Like, weirdly old. I go to a lumberjack museum a few times a year, and that's the kind of thing I'd expect to see under a glass case, with a plate next to it explaining that it's from the 19th century. Weird. The lower one, with its intricate base and wrapping around the head, kind of looks like something you'd see in a God of War game. Just odd axes there, Frank. Next are a set of shears, which could be for cutting fabric or possibly sheet metal. Then a knife or saw with an open handle. No idea what this is for. There's a vice sitting on the bench below them, and then a shovel, wrenches, and a hammer to the right. Down on the floor, we've got gas canisters, probably for welding, a jerry can for gasoline, a burlap sack, and then a garbage can. Now we move to a much later version of the workbench. Most of the tools are still there, but the grinder is gone, and even with it missing, I still can't tell you what that thing behind it is. Maybe it's a radio? I, I got no idea. With Frank gone, we can see that there was also some tin snippers and a small hammer on the corkboard, and beneath the table are some boxes, a stool, and a toolkit. So no big revelations there. When we look at the top of the table in the later sequence, we can see that in addition to the sketchbook, there's a knife, a screwdriver, and a sickle on there. So, overall, we got a lot of gardening and woodworking tools, and a few metalworking tools. Will we find out a lot about Frank's crafting hobbies in the game? Probably not, but it would be fun if we did. Now, here's the key art from the end of the video. Tragically, there's no release date on the image, but there is a suggestion that I go and wishlist the game, which means it's time to check out the Steam page. The description clues us into the game's premise. Frank Stone murdered a ton of people at some point in the past, and the memories of that event have haunted the town of Cedar Hill ever since. The hole in reality suggests that he's going to be using the magic of the entity to come back and keep killing? Fun fact, there's a town named Cedar Hill in Utah. But it's a fairly new suburb in Salt Lake City built at the foot of a mountain, rather than the dying Oregon steel town that the game seems to be set in. The rest of the page is just standard hype text explaining what a supermassive game narrative adventure is. Although, the term, a mystery of cosmic proportions, suggests we're going to get deep into the entity lore, which I'm pretty psyched about, honestly. Now, let's look at the new screenshots. First, we've got more tunnels, including a bunch of valves to turn. Will this mean a pipe dream style puzzle? Probably not. They abandoned that with PS3 until dawn. Check out this angle on the facility. Note that unlike in the trailer, there's just a single wooden plank stretched across the entrance. An entrance that is notably smaller and less intimidating. I'm guessing this is closer to the version we'll actually see in the game. Here's an iconic Dead by Daylight generator, along with a rail car that's suspended in mid-air somehow? How did they lift those chains? Why would they want to? Note the CSC logo on the train car, identifying it as belonging to the Cedar Steel Corporation, which has a saw blade as a logo. Maybe they make a ton of locking equipment? This is Oregon, after all. Here's a shot of Cedar Hill, possibly Main Street. We got a pharmacy, the adorably named Bomb Burger, and a boarded up building to let us know that the town is on the way out. The church in the background is a nice touch, and the cars give off a real 80s vibe. Maybe late 70s at the earliest. I checked Oregon's history of license plates, and the orange ones we see on the car to the right were used between 73 and 88. So that's right in the window we've been talking about so far. Now we get a car in what looks like a flashback. I say that because this is clearly a 50s or 60s boat of a cop car. So perhaps this is part of a teaser sequence set around Frank's original rampage, and the rest of the game is set 20 years later in the 70s or 80s? Unfortunately, and quite illegally, the cop car doesn't have a license plate, so I can't shake it against the historical Oregon plates to get a better idea of the year. 
Finally, we get a look at the steel mills furnace in action. Is this from the prologue and original murders? Or has Frank gotten it working again just for our four main characters? I'm guessing we'll find out soon enough. Okay, now to check if Sony or Xbox has some exclusive screenshots like they did for the quarry. That's a no for Xbox, and who the hell knows for Sony? Seriously, why is the Sony store so garbage? I've been using it for like a decade, and I still have no idea how to find screenshots on a games page. We do get one interesting thing from the Sony store, though. The suggestion that the game is for one to five players. This is likely a reference to movie night mode where everyone picks a character and makes choices for them. But we've only seen four playable characters. Is Sony misinformed? Or is there a fifth playable character we're going to learn about? Are we going to get to play as Frank for certain sequences? Now that seems like a stretch, of course, other than the fact that the entire point of Dead by Daylight is about letting the player choose between being a killer or a survivor, to such an extent that it's even the basis for how the Dead by Daylight Pinball M table is played. So while there's nothing in the trailer or existing text to suggest that we're going to be playing as Frank, between the metal level of how Dead by Daylight is constructed and the number of players Sony suggests, don't be shocked if that turns out to be an element of the game. Like hooking one of the characters who then you're going to have to try to unhook as somebody else. So that's all we've got for now. Did you notice anything in the trailer I missed? If so, be sure to mention it in the comment section below the video. If there's enough new information, Dead by Daylight stuff I'm not getting, especially, I'll whip up an update video to clue everyone in. For now, though, I've been the Hidden Object Guru. Thanks for watching. If you had a good time and you'd like to see more, there's buttons coming up to help with that. Questions, suggestions, related whatnots go in the comment section below the video. We're going to see you back here for more supermassive game content, especially as we find out more about casting of Frank Stone. But until then, I'll say that's right. Au revoir.